I plead not guilty to murder, my lord, but guilty to manslaughter. He will be released as early as is practicable. Whatever he said in there, he's innocent. I thought we could have a, a coffee and a chat, yeah? Jason, what happened? I told him to stay away from me. Timmy! I betrayed my client. Look, I'm not going to let this go. Just tell me how I can find Tony Pullings. Tell me how to find Yusuf Atta. Banville went dark ten minutes ago. She might be sending a message. You have a family here. You have a child. I have nothing here. Get her out. Why did she want the photos? She said they were a going away present. Who for? Her boyfriend. I'm going to go to America and I'm going to talk to that son of a bitch. Logan Bradley. You think I'd hurt that girl? Emma Banville. Come with us, please. These are some scary people, in. Way down in the water. Way down in the hole. Far away from any soul. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. I'm Yes, ma'am, Miss Banville is now in lockup. Did she speak to Sergeant Bradley? Yes, ma'am, but he said he had no idea what it was about. I'll be with you first thing in the morning. In the meantime, no one is to talk to her. I need to know whether she's. No, said... you don't. Ma'am, it's my duty to ensure the safety of all U.S. Air Force you personnel. You don't talk to Miss Banville or Sergeant Bradley. This is a matter of national security. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Who is she? I don't know, but she was put through by the base commander. So I guess we're going to do what she says, OK? Yes, sir. Hi, Miriam. I'm Dominic Chulov. I work with Emma. She was supposed to come to see me. I know. I'm sorry. Kevin Russell's had a serious accident. Is he okay? He's in hospital. Why didn't she come now? I'm afraid she had to go abroad. She asked me to talk to you on her behalf. So? By mutual agreement, Emma no longer represents your husband, Yusuf. Therefore, regrettably, she can no longer represent you. However, she has contacted these solicitors, all of whom have experience in your type of case. Be happy to represent you. I thought Yusuf was helping people. I thought that he cared about me. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not. OK. But there are real terrorists in here. Did you know that? They told me about Yusuf, about how he got a visit from Emma and how she said he wasn't her client. Then five minutes later, he was arrested by the terrorist police. Emma always warned Yusuf he was running a huge risk. But I'm telling you what they say. Now Emma is the one running the risk. Sir?
Marcus. It's me. Can you talk? What's going on, Logan? Circuit breakers, hang tight. So if you're gonna make me out like I'm some kind of pervert, you can fuck off back to your cell. Okay, okay, I believe you. Please, just tell me, what was going on between you? We were kids. We were in love. The Taipan. The F-16 Taipan on the bra, that was for you? Yeah. That was for me. We were gonna get married. As soon as I got back from Iraq. No, huh? Pathetic. Do you know what happened to Linda the night she disappeared? It was supposed to be our going away party. At the old officer's mess. Well, why there? Because it's just outside the wire. Linda and the other girls could get there and so could we unofficially. What other girls? Locals. Gold diggers, mostly. Linda wasn't like that. And did you meet her? No. Base was put on emergency lockdown. Some security business. VIPs flying in, private jets. Everybody was confined to barracks. What do you mean, security business? I don't know. The war was pretty close then. That kind of stuff was happening all the time. But if the party never happened, if you never met Linda, why did the Air Force ship you out? Because when I saw on the news that she disappeared, I ran to my CO, and I told them I'd been seeing her. They had me on a plane to the Gulf that same day. Tell me if I'd ever talked about it. I beat Guantanamo. I didn't hurt Linda. I could never hurt her. Just believe me. Time's up. Logan, get out of here. This never happened. Wait, how did you even get to know Linda in the first place? Her uncle introduced us. He used to bring stuff to the base. Phil Sims? Yeah, Phil Sims. Monty, are we secure? Yep, I've got Dominic here with me too. What's going on with Emma? We had an arrangement. She'd call every eight hours or so, report progress. Nothing for 20 hours. You know where she is? Andrews Air Force Base. She's been arrested. Probably. Did she connect with Logan Bradley? Possibly, I sent a PI down there. He says movers are outside Logan's house right now. Looks like he's being shipped out again. So she must have talked to him. Or they got to him first. How much trouble is she in, Larry? She's messing with some pretty powerful people here, the US military, CIA. They want to fuck her up, they can. As I've already said, I want to talk to Sergeant Bradley because he may have information that will help one of my clients. But your customs declaration said you're in the States for a conference on copyright law. I am. I got a lead unexpectedly. Where'd she get the lead? Where did you get the lead? Where from? I'm afraid that's confidential. 
Kill her, that's obstruction. That's obstruction. No, it isn't. As an attorney, I don't have to divulge any privileged information. She already lied to a federal officer, which is a felony. She's compounding that felony by refusing to answer questions. How did she find Bradley? You're making this worse for yourself. Lying to a federal officer is a felony. Tell me where you found Sergeant Bradley or that's another felony. Where? I found him at his home. Why is that a felony? How, you idiot, not where? I mean, how did you find him? I'm afraid I can't divulge that either. Well? She's too calm. And she's showing no interest in actually talking to Bradley, which means she already talked to him. She could know about him and the girl. I say we keep her here. Tie her up in red tape. She committed at least two felonies. No, send her back. The Air Force got Bradley out of the way. She's not going to find him again. Sir, I think that's... You a... overthink. Bradley's a sideshow here. You know that. Don't make the cover-up worse than the crime. Yes? It's Chief Superintendent Greenwood. Chief Superintendent? I need to question Emma Banville. Banville? Why are you calling me? Her office says she's in the States. She's not answering her phone, and the hotel doesn't know where she is. Why do you want to question her? You know we arrested Yusuf Attar. Well, we have his hard drive. Now there's evidence that Banville's more involved in his network than we thought. Involved how? She knows the names of his financiers. That sounds like criminal conspiracy. You're going to charge her. Put it this way, she's going to need a good lawyer. So can you help me? Yes. I can try to track her down. After the break, we return to the party leadership contest and an interview with the clear favorite, Matthew Wine. Well, excuse us. Yeah. You've done it. Already over 50% of the vote and writing, you bloody wine! Thank you, mate. This is incredible. I told you it happened, didn't I? You did. Remember, strong but humble. Thank your opponent. So you look forward to working with him to return the party to power. Sweetheart. I'm so proud of you. Matthew, there you are. I am delighted for you, truly. Thank you, Zainab, but it's not in the bag yet. Oh, yes, it is. Look, we're live in 30, so we better get a move on. Catch you later, Laura. Right, let's just get you wired up. So this will be pretty soft pedal stuff. You know, your reaction to your victory, how you're going to lead your party out of the wilderness. What about soft pedal? Bloody hell. Ready? Five. Well, he's done it. The Iraq veteran, the young backbencher, the charismatic outsider has just won. Gentlemen, welcome to London Gatwick. We're stopping short of the gate to unload two passengers. Please remain in your seats. What grounds are you holding me? Oh, yours. Thanks. What grounds?
What is this? It was the only way we could think to get you out of the States. <laughs> We're in the chief superintendent's debt. I'm putting my career on the line. So you better have something. Oh, I do, but it's not going to help your career. Just tell me. Linda had an American boyfriend on the air base. The Air Force snatched him out of there the second Linda disappeared in 2003, and they've just done the same to him now. I don't care. I want to question him. Yeah, he's beyond your reach. But the man who introduced them, the man who knew about them, he isn't. Linda's uncle, Phil Sims. Oh. Did you ever question him? Yes. Yes. And I'll question him again. Come with me. You can tell me the rest in the car. Oh, I haven't slept for three days. I just want to shower and ch change my clothes. There's a toilet down the hall. Come now or not at all. Look, I didn't tell her everything. Logan said that there was security business on the base that night. Private planes landing. VIPs. Have you got a pen? Call this guy, Douglas. Tell him you want details of all flights in and out of the base the night that Linda disappeared. I don't know. I thought he'd know that. Because private jets probably means CIA. Douglas has been tracking those flights for years. Why didn't you tell Green with this? If I did, she'd lock the whole thing down. Those planes are the key. They're the answer to everything, Don. How long has he had the business for? He supplied produce to the base back in 2003, and booze and drugs. That's what the local cops thought. Now we also know he supplied girls. <sighs> what are you waiting for? Phil Sims is a hard nut. He'll know that we're just trying to provoke a response, and he'll give us nothing. What do you suggest? This was Linda's boyfriend, Logan. He was with the US Air Force. He was the one that Linda took the photos for. It's true? It appears so. What, what the hell happened to him? When Linda disappeared, the Americans got him out of the country. You mean he killed her? No. No, he was meant to meet her the night Linda disappeared. But the base was on lockdown. He was confined to barracks. So why are you showing us this, then, when it sounds like Russell's still the killer? Wait, wait, wait. I want to know how it happened. How did Linda even know this bloke? Your brother introduced them. What? I didn't know who that is. It's Linda's boyfriend. Boyfriend? Linda was a kid. She was never even on the base. Never on the base? Really? She got and went here with you. Helping out. And what about this? I used to wonder what you and that tow rag Pullins was up to now, I know. Charlie, listen. Pimping out my kid? Me? Who had her working behind the bar, hmm? With her tight T-shirts and her big tits? Yes. No! Stop well, it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! You saw Linda that night, didn't you? You gave her a lift to the base. Where did you take her? You say it, or I'll kill you. Right here, I didn't do anything. Say it. I just drove her. Where? To the old officer's mess. That true? Yeah. I dropped him off. I drove away. Lynn was fine. She was happy, Charlie, I swear. You dropped them off. Who else? No one else, just Lynn. Who else? Linda's friend. What friend? Rachel. Rachel Lee. Yes, sir. Only friends for a few months. I hardly knew her. She's a bit older than Linda, but... Lynn was always good with older kids and 
grown-ups. Do you know where Rachel is now? Why does it matter? Because until now, we thought she was the last person to see Linda alive when she was talking to Kevin outside the school hall. She was also the reason that the police started questioning Kevin in the first place. So where is she? I don't know. She left school that summer and moved away. Does her mum still live in the area? No, she moved away a long time ago. Don't know where. Could I borrow one of these? So this is it, the old officer's mess. So this is where you dumped her. What a place. Looked better in 2003. I thought about basing my inquiry out here, but then... Then you got Kevin Russell. That made the inquiry a whole lot easier. Do you remember the autopsy report? Jet fuel, conifers and sand. She was buried here. That phone call. That was one of my officers. Wanting to know where I was. Where you were, more to the point. So tell me. What have you given me, exactly? I've given you Linda Sims' boyfriend. I've given you Phil Sims. And they're giving you a place that Linda was killed. Here, right here. So who killed her? Who killed Linda Sims? You know how far we are from the school. One mile. So you know who could have been here that night, even if he walked. Kevin Russell. Except he didn't. He's still the best suspect that we have, and you are no closer to proving him otherwise. Get forensics out here. Find her grave. What? Find a grave with no body that may or may not have been here 14 years ago. You think I can swing that? And even if I could, that still doesn't prove that Kevin Russell didn't do it. We need to find the girl. <sighs> we need to find Rachel Lee. Because she lied. She told a big, fat lie. Is it? It's Tony. Tony Pullings. What do you want, Tony? Phil Sims just called me. What? Why? She knows about him. About everything. Who knows? Banville. And she's not alone. She's got that detective with her. DCS Greenwood. They're working together. Yes, Dom? Your friend came through. There were two flights that night. There was one... Not now, Dom. I'm on the way to the hospital to check on Kevin. Meet me there in about an hour. Just, What's I going on? Darius, tell me. Go in, love. See for yourself. He came too, 20 minutes ago, just like that. He can't really talk, but he knows who we are, all of us. He asked about you. He said your name. Hi, Kevin. I'm so glad to see you. Of 
been to America. I found new witnesses, new facts. I'm so close to proving you didn't do it. The doctors say we should go. Too much excitement isn't good. Yeah. Now you rest, Kevin. You get strong. I'm here, Dad. I'm always here. Excuse me, please. Is it true? Are you close? Because to get his hopes up again and then... I'm close. I'm meeting someone now. We'll talk soon. says you've got two planes. Gulfstream out of Smith Airfield, Virginia, and a C-5 out of Hamburg. And there were other flights that night, but these are the two you want. The tail number's confirming. Both planes are from the CIA rendition fleet. I thought so. Taking Al-Qaeda suspects into the UK, or shipping them out again? Neither. Not this time. Now, usually we can't find passenger lists for obvious reasons, but I had a stroke of luck. The Gulfstream flew back to the States that night, but developed hydraulic problems. I had to land in Nova Scotia. Canadians insisted on seeing the flight manifest. One passenger. Jack Kretschmann. The US Undersecretary for Defense in the run-up to the Iraq War. Who was on the plane from Germany? Just a guess. But given the timing and given Kretschmann, I'm pretty confident. Mustafa Sabah. An Iraqi defector being run by German intelligence. The B&D were holding him near Hamburg. Sabah, codename Slider. We just told the Americans what they wanted to hear. Saddam had chemical weapons. Which went straight into Colin Powell's speech at the UN four days later. Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. It was the Carcer's belly. If you're right, why did they come here? Why did they come to the UK? Well, probably to meet someone from the British government at least equal in rank to Kretschmann. What's this got to do with Kevin? It's timing. Where were we when Linda Sims disappeared? Six weeks away from a war that no one wanted. Things were falling apart for Blair. He needed proof that Saddam was a genuine threat. Again, what's it got to do with Kevin? That's the question we need to ask. But we're never going to get to these two. I need to find out who was there from our side. I need the Brit. I'll do what I can. Are you ready for this? I suppose. Well, oh, you'll be fine. They'll ask some obvious questions. Then they'll do that thing where they make us walk towards the camera pretending it's not there. All that? I think I can do that. Oh, you can do all of it. Just be yourself. Yes. G.S. Brooks, sir. It's Jenna, isn't it? Tell me, what's DCS Greenwood working on now? The Yusuf Fatar case. What aspect of it? It's all right. Mrs. Miles shares our interest in Attar. Is she questioning Attar's lawyer, Emma Banville? I believe she has, yes. Has Miss Banville been charged with any offence? I don't believe so. And why not? The thing is, Banville isn't Atar's lawyer anymore. Atar's wife was told that Banville was no longer representing him. When? About four days ago at Sizemore. We actually got it on film. She asked me to talk to you on her behalf. By mutual agreement, Emma no longer represents your husband, you say? Yeah, I mean, we don't know when it happened, but we can guess. Mm -hmm. And just... five minutes later, he was arrested by the terrorist police. Emma always warned Yusuf he was running a huge risk. Okay, maybe. But what they say is now she's the one who's running the risk. Did you hear that? That was a threat. 
Did you warn Vandal? We assumed he did. Do you still have people on her? Once we heard she split with a tar, we pulled back. Didn't seem to be in need. What about GCHQ? That's above my pay grade. Why, why do you think the threat is real? I doubt it. If you learn anything more about Vandal, call me. Thanks, Jenna. How do you know Douglas? He helped me in one of the Guantanamo cases. Was he a spook? No. Uh, he was in the parachute regiment. His legs were paralyzed by an IED in Iraq. Jesus. Same IED killed three of his mates. That's why he cares. Do we actually have anything that might persuade the CPS to look at this again? Linda's American boyfriend, Phil Sims, CIA meeting, exactly the same time as Linda disappeared, mysterious friend Rachel. Yeah, I think so. The CIA angle, it's not a bit fanciful? The Americans are deeply involved in whatever happened to Kevin and to Linda. But why? Because there is something. There is someone they are desperate to hide. When I... Yes, Douglas. OK. What date? Really? A photo on the same page? Got it. No, I know it's no guarantee, but it makes sense. Thank you. Douglas has got our vote. The Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet Office. Sir Alistair McKinnon. One of the powers behind the throne. Hello? It's Alistair. Guess who's coming to see me? Emma Banville. Correct. She wants to talk about the night of the 1st of February, 2003. You don't have to talk to her, so don't. Why? So you can fix it? You know, if you hadn't tried to fix it back then, we wouldn't be where we are now. No, you'd be in jail. Don't give her the time of day. She's got you scared, hasn't she? One little lawyer, one unreconstructed, lefty lawyer. Have you been drinking? Goodbye, Heather. From now on, I take care of myself. There are others more important than you. You said it yourself. What's up? Um, I haven't been here since I was a student. Did you hate it? No. Met the love of my life. And then I lost him. <laughs> you okay? Wish me luck. So, I wanted to ask you about uh, the 1st of February, 2003, what you were doing that night, if you can remember. Uh, February 03, I was working in the Cabinet Office. Night of the 1st, I was here, Cambridge, to give a talk to the Law Society. I didn't give that talk. Instead, I went to an air base in East Anglia. I met a chap called Kretschmer. The U.S. Department of Defense and an Iraqi scientist named Mustafa Sabah. He had information about Saddam Hussein's chemical weapons. I passed his information on to my government. It was crucial in the vote to go to war. So you're you're admitting to this. An illicit meeting with a discredited scientist? Secret, not illicit. Saba had family in Iraq. We had a duty to protect them. And you just swallowed what he gave you? You didn't question it? At the time, it seemed genuine. And what would have been the point? It was your job. 
You could have said, this is rubbish. You could have stopped it, everything, right there. <laughs> no. The ships had sailed. The intelligence didn't matter. We were going to support our ally. I will be with you, whatever. Remember? How can I forget? They were too righteous. Mistakes were made. Nobody denies that. But if you were to add a few more details to the record and embarrass some once public figures, well, you have at it. Is there anything else? Oh, yes. Oh, you missed out one detail. Who else was there that evening? Oh, there were some British and American intelligence officers. I mean, even if I knew their names, I wouldn't turn to you. And you're still missing someone? Who? A schoolgirl. Linda Sims. She was supposed to meet her boyfriend on the base that night, but instead she ran into you. Now, maybe she startled you, maybe you startled her. A car hit her, head on. She was buried alive, and then she was dug up, and she was buried again, to make it look like someone else did it. My client, Kevin Russell. I'm glad you're recording this. It will prove just how unhinged you are. I mean, why? Why would we? Kill a girl, even by accident, and then conceal the facts, lie about it? Tell me, why? <clears throat> Can I help you with anything else? You know Matthew Wilde. I know most people who matter. You could have been one of them. Could still be, you know. God knows, you're bright enough. Except you hate your country so much. I love my country. I just hate what people like you have done to it. People like me? <laughs> Honestly, my dear. You sound like an angry teenager. You arrogant bastard. Do you know what? It's your arrogance that gives you away. The second burial. Linda's body could have just stayed where it was. But when the police started questioning Kevin, it was too tempting, wasn't it, just to dig her up and lay her at his doorstep? This is absurd. No, you said it yourself. Who was there that night? It was intelligence officers, CIA, MI6, men adept at lying and deception. And this was the time of lies. Dodgy dossiers, sexing up. Don't let the smoking gun be a mushroom cloud. You thought you could get away with anything. Why not just run over some girl and blame it on the poor sod that fancied her? Why would we? Please, just tell me why. Because if you were exposed, you and your bloody sinister cabal, do you think that the Blair government would have won its vote to go to war? I want you to leave. Don't forget this. I suggest you take it to the Guardian, because the police will just laugh at you. In fact, even the Guardian will laugh at you. You're scared. Why? Get out. Is it for yourself, or is it for someone else? Get out! He admitted he was at the base. Phil Sims said he dropped Linda at the base. Now it depends on the police and my little tape recorder. But you did the aim. You won. Well, oh, doesn't feel like that. He gave it up too easily. He's hiding something. Do you know what? No. Are you okay? No, not really. You know, these past few days, America, Cambridge. I just feel like I've been exhumed. Like my past dug up and all these things I thought I was over. I am so not. I'm sorry. You wanted to tea. 
What things aren't you over? Mistakes, betrayal, heartbreak, you know, the usual. Christ, forget the tea. Oh. Having a party. Hey, Tom. Steve. Hi, love. Oh. Flight got in late. You were in. I just went out like a light. Sit, Tom. Sit. Nah, just drop an M off. Good luck tomorrow. The cops. Thanks, Tom. Right, you just can't do that. You can't just, just walk back in here after disappearing for three weeks and the worst time of my life and you just waltz back in. I know. Look, the job came in. I not one phone call, one email. I sent you a Skype message. Steve, I want this to end. You know, I'm really fond of you, but I want to change my life before it's too late. I'm going to give up the criminal work. I'm going to try and adopt a child again. And I know the only reason you went along with that is because you're just too lazy to argue, so basically, I want you to leave. No. You can't say no. This is my house. I pay off the bills that give me tenancy Steve, rights. no. I want to change my life. I want a child. You have children. What, you? No, your clients. You love them. You stay up all night with them. You bring them home. Miriam's not the first terrorist to sleep in the living She's room. She's not. Kevin's not the first murderer to sleep in the it's office. Not. They're your children. You'll never give them up. Don't kid yourself. And I know I'm lazy. But I'm good for you. You can relax with me, have a laugh. And I love you. So you're going to have to work a lot harder than that to get rid of me. So if there's not a sex offender to sleep in the office, I'll, I'll keep it in there. What do you expect us to do with this? To Alistair McKinnon says, on tape, that a meeting happened between the people whose names I've listed on that report at exactly the same time and place as Linda Sims met her death. I expect the police to investigate. You have to reopen the Linda Sims case right now. Well, that it was the time and place of Linda's death is your assertion, not a fact. No, Phil Sims stated that he dropped Phil Linda... Phil Sims has withdrawn his statement. He says he was intimidated by his brother, didn't know what he was saying. That's bullshit. Nothing puts Linda in the same place as this alleged meeting. Why am I even talking to you? Where's Olivia Greenwood? I'm the investigating officer, not DCS Greenwood. Yeah, I don't care. I'm going to talk to her. Well, you can't, because she's been suspended pending an internal inquiry. You wrecked her career. You won't wreck mine. I'm not going to let you drop this. Miss Banville, I have it from on high. There is no interest in investigating what may or may not have happened 14 years ago. Now, the Linda Sims case is closed. What about the girl? What about Rachel? After her A-levels, Rachel Lee went to a language school in Nice, south of France. After that, there's nothing. What about her family, her mother? Mrs Lee left the village in 2006. Been unable to trace her. Did anyone even bloody look? Yeah, two officers conducted extensive inquiries. Is there anything else? Hello, Don. Where are you? Oh, God.
Still to come tonight, we've the ITV News at 10. And over on ITV Encore, is their secret out? We've all knew the Americans next. And if you missed the very latest from the lock last night, head to the ITV Hub, where it's available to watch now.